Hmm. Hello. Ah! I used to come here when I was eight years old and do workshops down at Gasfrey Road, and I've still got old VHSs of little claymation creatures like falling over themselves. So that we get to sort of come back here as grown-ups and do a bona fide project is is absolutely amazing. Well, I had been a huge fan of Wallace and Gromit oh so many years ago and um, was slightly obsessed with it, actually, and had the videotapes of them that I watched over and over and over and over and over again with my daughter, and that was, you know, a close shave and long trousers. Big fan of stop-motion animation, and I love felt work, and so very honoured to be invited to be a part of it. There's been a sort of great resurgence of, like, needle felt animation. I mean, there's some amazing people who for making it recently and we were looking for a material that you absolutely couldn't replicate in CG. So the felting process, you start with this, uh, with this wool and then using a needle, you're stabbing the wool and bringing it tighter and tighter together, make it into a sheet that we can then apply to the foam that we've made the puppet out of. Tactile, warm feel to the felt, which um, I think is something very different to what an Ardman normally does. It's really nice because you get a chance to move the puppets quite quickly, whereas if you're using clay, you're sculpting all the time, which tends to slow you down a bit. But there are other drawbacks with it, especially with the facial performances, that you have to figure out how best to use it using a more simplified version. You're a misfit. You're an oddball. You're a freak. It was an absolute dream to work with the, the actors that we somehow managed to convince to, to work on our film. <laughs> oh, I see. I have to say, I feel like my, my first instincts were potentially quite you know, predictable, just in terms of evil pussy cats out, you know, voice and stuff. I feel like the character of the cat really evolved because of the direction that I was getting. And it felt like I was being stretched in a way that I hadn't predicted. Mm. And so, for instance, the first hello. Hello. It's almost so <laughs> unmenacing. It doesn't really tell you that much about the psychology of the cat. There's something quite neutral about it, which somehow in the end makes it even slightly scarier and creepier, which was really interesting. Hello. Yeah. Hello. I'm not sure what it is, but yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> all you have is voice. You don't have the rest of your body to express it, so it all has to come through the voice. Terrible, terrible mouse. And it was all about kind of getting me to do a very specific sound. Genetically, there's very few people who can actually do a really realistic cat purr and it involves kind of like snoring, but I can't do it. You know, most people just roll their tongue, brrr, something like that. But actually she remarkably is able to do it. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I didn't realize this was a... <laughs> She was really getting into it. It was really, really fun. I came into town, I showed up at the studio, and they said, OK, for the first hour, we're going to work on the, the words, and then we're going to spend a couple hours on the song. And I said, wait, what song? What do you mean song? <laughs> I hadn't quite read the memo. They, they quickly realised that it was going to be more of a talking song with me than it was going to be a singing song. I spent most of most of lockdown with Gillian in my headphones, pretending to or acting out being a, an evil cat. So that was that was wonderful. Uh, how about we play a game of hide and seek? My claim is doing a little elbow bump just before uh, lockdown with Gillian. Don't fit in, but you'd fit into my belly. For you are the perfect place. A lot of who the character of the cat became, I think, came out of what happened within the song. Because in singing, I ended up exposing aspects of her personality. I couldn't have said it better myself. Each character has its own instrument. Each, each 
emotion has a little riff. Uh, the cat is the bass clarinet and, and cello, kind of like the mix of those two. Having a voice, you know, like Gillian's for instance, is always a bit of a gift really, because it really informs the way that you animate something. So tragic, so sad, trying to fit in. <sighs> Of, of, of all the scenes in the film, I think the one I've enjoyed particularly is a shed sequence. So she's basically turning a, a, a normal domestic shed into a place of intrigue, of, of danger. And it's quite a turning point in the film as well. It's, it's great to create that sort of mood. It was so much fun. I, I've seen the film and it's delightful and my whole family loved it. So if the teenagers are enjoying it, 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 it must be special. Sort of quite surreal, really. There's, there's a lot of people on this project that literally made all the films that really inspired us. We've really had to sort of pinch ourselves that we get to plug our idea into this like, amazing machine of, of Ardman and see it brought to life. It's unbelievable. <laughs>